Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta 6 has been out for a few days along with iOS 17 public beta 4. And there's even more features to talk about that we didn't find initially in the iOS 17 beta 6 is out what's new video. So we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about the overall experience of iOS 17 beta 6 on my 14 pro max. I've been using it the entire time on my main phone and iPad pro. And we'll take a look at your experience based off the YouTube community poll where there's over 34,000 votes. This is an incredible number. So thanks to everyone that participated. And I've taken all of the information here in the comments where there's 278 comments compiled that to determine what the overall experience is like. First though, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. Battery health is something we'll talk about later in the video, but there's also a different way to check this if you use the Apple support app. So if you have that installed and you go into support, We'll just search for it this way. Once you're in the support app, it will recognize your devices. Then you want to tap on your device, iPhone 14 pro max in this case, then you go down to device performance, go to battery performance, and it says finding your best options. Then you can have it check right now. It will check the overall battery performance. Make sure that even if you have lower battery health, that it can actually supply the voltage it needs to get the best operation out of your device. So you'll see the capacity is at 89%. It says maximum capacity is 80% or higher and peak performance is normal. So we'll take a look at 89% and battery life a little bit later. Now, another thing that's been updated this week is WhatsApp. If you're using WhatsApp, you can now send HD photos. So when you're sending a photo to someone, you actually will now have a high resolution option, or it will just send in a higher resolution and look much better, much like what iMessage does as well. Now, also, I wanted to mention the Apple event in iPhone 15. Many suspect that we'll have an Apple event on September 12th. We've talked about that before, and we would expect the invites to go out the previous week. Also, iPhone 15 might gain support up to 35 watt charging this time around. So it's been a little bit slow compared to others, but 35 watt, if they can manage the overall heat of the battery and processor and everything at the same time could be a welcome change and upgrade. So I just wanted to mention that altogether. Now, as far as new features and changes, the first thing has to do with wallpaper. There's a new option. If you go in and maybe set a wallpaper, if we use today's wallpaper, and I'll link that in the description, if we use two fingers and pull down, you'll see it actually says wallpaper extended. So it extended the wallpaper and filled it in at the top, sort of blurred it out, and then you can bring it back. Again, we can extend it again if we want to, and sort of zoom out if it doesn't fit properly within the overall screen. So that's something you have the option for, or you can just turn that off altogether. Just sort of pinch and zoom, or pinch out, and you'll get that option. So if you want to have a different look to it, you now have that option. If we go into Safari and then tap on the little tab option in the bottom right, then press and hold on our tabs. We now have the option to copy links. Now this is not necessarily new in beta six, but it's something I haven't mentioned before. If we copy the links and then go out, go into notes and we'll paste that we paste and it actually gives us the overall links we had from those other web pages. So if you have a ton of different things, the links to the web pages, you'll actually can just put them in a document if you want to do that. Within messages, if we press and hold on the plus button that we have for our apps, so if we just go out, press and hold, it goes right into our photo picker and we can quickly pick a photo. This isn't a glitch this time around and maybe Apple was watching where before you could set a specific app here and then kind of press and hold and it would go into that app. It doesn't seem you can do that anymore, but is specific to photos now just pressing and holding. If we go into shortcuts, when we have our AirPods connected, we can set noise control mode on the AirPods Pro 2 and then set it to control either noise cancellation, transparency, or adaptive. This now works properly where it didn't on previous updates. So if you have this set, you can now actually toggle it with a shortcut if you want to. If we go into spotlight search and then search for settings, scroll down to shortcuts and tap on show more, we have our toggles for different options such as focus mode, but they've added true tone as an option now. So if you want to toggle it directly from settings here, you can do that where it wasn't there before. We only had the option for focus modes and a few different things such as always on display but now we can turn on true tone or turn it back off. The first time I opened music on one of my devices, I actually got a splash screen that says Apple music and privacy. You can learn more or continue. I didn't see that on my main device, but saw it on a different one. And also if we go into music and we press and hold on a song, they've changed this a little bit. So this looks much more like what we had before. If we press and hold on the same song, you'll see that previously, if we tapped on the album, we could view credits. Now it will bring us directly to the album. So it's just been 
brought back to what we had before. Within the health app, Apple has again refined state of mind under mental well-being. So if we go into this, go to log, tap next, give it a second here, they've updated the animation and the colors again. So as we change them, there's slight differences here, but we'll go ahead and tap next. And then they've updated it with more feelings. So here you can see we had content, calm and peaceful. We now have indifferent and drained. So we'll just tap on these, hit next. And again, we have more options here as well, where the weather can affect our mood. So if we want to select that, we can do that or whatever we'd like. So we'll just tap done. And again, some of these colors have just been updated. So they continue to refine this and get this exactly how they like it. If we're using name drop, bringing our devices close together, give it a second here, it will actually say connected now to let you know that it's connected to those devices. So it's pretty simple, but just gives you a little more information. In the initial what's new video, I talked about how we have display and brightness where they finally updated the wallpaper. One thing I didn't mention that I wasn't aware of is if we go into our display resume options here, you'll see animations for default and larger text. They haven't updated those images with iOS 17 versions of iMessage. So if we let it cycle here again, give it a second, that's actually the last version of iMessage. So they need to update that. The next thing they've updated has to do with phone. Now I've talked about this a little bit where you end a call and the end call button is now back in the middle. They've also updated this on the keypad and I've shown where it's in the middle as far as end call. But if we go into the keypad, we now have the hang up button here. It's in the bottom right still though. We can hide the keypad and go back, go back to keypad and then hang up from here if we want to now. The next update is more of a correction than anything else. You can see the music playing in the control center and it's now centered properly where it wasn't before and it looked a little different. It's a very minor update, but something they've changed. Within find my there's a feature that we knew about from the onset of iOS 17, but now it's more prominent, or at least I haven't mentioned it before where we have the option to share an air tag. So we can immediately just go in and add a person. So I knew this was there, but it looks like they've updated this and I'm not sure when they made this larger and more prominent, but it's been updated to look this way. Also something they've updated recently, but we're not sure exactly when is if we lock the phone give it a moment here. We'll try and unlock it, but we'll put in the wrong passcode over and over. So we'll do this a few times. We'll just tap a bunch of numbers, have it lock on itself. And once it does that and says, try again in one minute, if you tap on forgot passcode, you now have the option to start iPhone reset. This was not there in iOS 16.6. This was added in one of the betas. Let me know if you've seen this before, but I know it's there in beta five, but before that, I'm not really sure. Another thing is the silent switch is no longer providing haptic feedback when you enable it. This is a bug and should be resolved in the future, I believe, but right now it's not doing anything. Maybe Apple's working on getting with this ready for iPhone 15, where it's said to be more of an action button like the Apple watch instead of a silent switch. And if we take a look at some of the behind the scene changes, thanks to my friend, Steve Mosier here on Twitter, you can follow him there if you want to and see some of the updates, such as the haptic feedback for the ringtone and alerts. There's an update to their privacy policy. And if we go through the different threads here, you'll see different things such as when editing a wallpaper, there's wallpaper extended. I showed you that before there's updates that have been made for system watch faces and wallpapers and other things as well, such as users should be able to share urban mobility key, AKA transit card and passes. And there's some new icons. They're also again, updating health and more. So this is just some of the things he's found. And if you want to check it out, be sure to follow him on Twitter. Now, as far as future updates, we know already that Apple's working on iOS 17.1. We know this as people are starting to see them in website analytics. So 17.1 and iOS 16.7, 17.1 is where I would expect that new journaling app that Apple has talked about. So there's supposed to be a journaling app. If we go to Apple's website and under their iOS 17 preview, you'll see the journaling app that says coming later this year, this will probably be iOS 17.1 or 17.2. This is a new app that should help you journal every day, combining things such as your location, different photos and more. If you go into it here, you'll see it's a new app to write and remember. So this is something I'm looking forward to. I've used day one for quite some time and I want to see how it actually compares. So that's something we could see probably after the release of this update. As far as iOS 17 beta seven, I would expect that as soon as next week. That's probably what we'll have as far as that goes on the 22nd or 23rd. 
then we might have a beta 8 and a final RC maybe in the first week of September like we did last year. So that's kind of what we had last year as far as the overall rollout of betas. And then we had a final release in mid-September. So that's what I'm expecting as far as iOS 16. I would expect an iOS 16.7 RC maybe in early September to fix some additional bugs with a final release in mid-September as well. Apple did that last year before iOS 17. So that's probably what we'll see since we haven't seen an iOS 16.6.1 and it looks like we're not going to get one of those. Now, as far as the overall experience of iOS 16 beta six, it seems to be much better or enhanced compared to beta five. This seems to be a huge improvement with tons of bug fixes and it's much, much better. That doesn't mean it's perfect. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is the camera. It does seem to have some camera improvements from iOS 16, but from beta five to beta six, it's really hard to say. So so let's go ahead and take a look. So we'll take a few photos here and compare it with beta five and see what it actually looks like. I think overall it's pretty good. I don't know that it's a huge improvement over beta five. Some people are seeing an improvement with things such as cinematic mode. When you're using video modes here, I mentioned that before with the person who made this wallpaper fresco or Artemis prime on Twitter. He actually said that cinematic mode is giving the correct white balance. Now it's not darkening the overall video and seems to be much better. So that's a great step in the right direction. Let me know if you think they've improved the camera in the comments below. As far as bug fixes, well, it seems to have fixed most of the issues I had with app crashes and more. Some people are saying that it's fixed issues with HomeKit as well, where they actually had a camera, a doorbell camera, and it wouldn't lock up on them. That was something they were experiencing before, and it seems to be fixed this time around. Also, they seem to have fixed just basic overall usage of this. When you go into different apps, they work. Widgets seem to work. And if we go over and maybe activate a song here, let me turn it down, hit play. It works, it animates, changes as you would expect, and just works really, really well. I think they've focused a lot on this and fixed a lot of bugs. And you can see that in the feedback app where they've actually had tons of them. I mentioned in the initial what's new video where we have over 70 different resolved issues. So we have things that are fixed all throughout the OS. There's still known issues, but far less than we had with beta five. Some of the known issues that remain though, of course, is that notification bug. You just saw maybe there are some of the frame rate slow down. The notification bug is definitely there. If we scroll up then scroll down again, sometimes it looks like it's working okay now, but sometimes it just really doesn't behave as you would want it to. So most of the time it's a little bit choppy and just not great yet. The keyboard bug is returned for some where it sort of just disappears and you can't use it. I haven't run into that at all. It seems to show up every single time. And some people are saying that album artwork won't minimize. So maybe you're playing a song and again, let me turn it down. We'll hit play. And if we go to the lock screen, tap on the album art, tap on it again, it seems to be working fine for me, but some people are seeing it just not do anything. Also, some have said that the volume gets stuck or sort of freezes. So I've only seen a little bit of stuttering here and notification bugs. Most things seem to be fixed. The same is true with the iPad. I've really had no issues whatsoever with iPad OS 17 beta six this time around. It's much, much better, much more stable, seems to be smooth. Apps are working as you would expect going into different things, whether it's weather or anything else seems to work well. So I'm glad to see they've resolved a huge amount of issues. As far as the overall performance, performance, as I showed you already, things seem to load fast, but the frame rates just aren't great. So things like ProMotion, if you're just scrolling, seem to work okay, but sometimes when you swipe in and out of apps, go into music, swipe it out, sometimes it just sort of stutters and slows down. That's okay as it's still a beta, but just something to be aware of. Also, as far as the heat of the device, I mentioned this on Twitter that this is the first time I've picked up the phone and it was cold to the touch. It's gotten much better. We'll talk about battery life in a moment, but it's gotten much, much better as far as that goes. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was before. And if we take a look with the thermal camera while this was on, you'll see we're at about 90 to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. This was over 100 last time. So much, much better. And also instead of doing the conversion, you can see 32.6 degrees Celsius is the highest 
most I've seen here. And if we go into battery, we'll go into settings, then down to battery. Battery health shows 89%, as I showed earlier. This is with 275 cycles. I've had to charge it daily until this update. I no longer have to charge it every single day. It seems to be much, much better. Not perfect, but better. So you'll see I used 100% of my battery yesterday and only had 3 hours and 18 minutes of screen active time and 3 hours and 22 minutes of screen idle time. If we look at a few days back though, I only had 2 hours and used about 100% of the battery, or 3.5 hours but had to charge it once or twice throughout the day, using 1.5 times the battery based off of this. Just to take a look at someone else's battery, thanks to Abhishek for sending this in. This is on an iPhone 11 Pro Max with 95% battery health. He had 6 hours and 56 minutes of screen on time, 2 hours of screen off time, and used 100% of his battery. So definitely better than what I'm getting, but it seems to be it's not better than maybe iOS 16.6, but for some it is. And you'll see here today, 2 hours or the other day two hours and 51 minutes and used about 70% of its battery life. So it's actually much better than before, but again, still has a little ways to go, but it's much improved. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta six or iOS 17 public beta four, and you haven't already, first of all, I would urge you to install the public beta as if you're not a developer, the public betas will make sure that they're more stable before they're released. Sometimes they release the same day, like beta six and public beta four, sometimes the next day. So it makes a big difference depending on who you are. And at this point they're fairly stable, but again, they're still buggy. And if you're having issues, report it in feedback. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of your comments. Lachlan McDougall said on 11 pro and it's significantly better, better battery, better performance, less jittery, a lot less bugs and face ID bug I was getting is mostly gone. Scott Hagel 3254 said iPhone 12 pro running iOS 17 beta six. The phone runs fast and smooth without any lag or stutter. Battery life is excellent, both in use and overnight. I can easily get through a day on one charge and still have 40% battery left at bedtime. These older devices do run well on iOS 17. Derek Thurman 9456 says the latest beta has significantly impacted battery life on all my devices running it. Almost unusable. The previous betas had been showing improvement progressively. This is the only person I could find that said it was impacting all of their devices. Most people said the current beta is the best one out there. So it's a little bit different depending on what device you're using and who you ask. iOS 17 beta six is running much better than every other beta version, especially performance and battery wise. The battery life hasn't been great since iOS 15 when I got my 13 pro. The heat issue seems to be pretty much resolved. Zomboy 4313 said running iOS 17 beta six, everything is good. Battery life is improving even more, but has moments of severe draining. Hopefully the remaining bugs gets ironed out like the notification bug, but overall one of the best betas I've tried. XEZ runner or ZZ runner said drastically improved battery life, very similar to 16.6. Some minor hiccups at times, noticing very slight stutters, but stable otherwise. Stacy Gray said aside from the notification area issues that seem to be getting ignored, iOS 17 beta six has been great. No bugs encountered so far and everything has been very smooth on my 14 pro. No heat issues, battery is great and still 100% battery health here 10 months later and so no complaints really. And so that's everything with iOS 17 beta 6 and iOS 17 public beta 4. It's getting more and more refined, more and more enhanced, and I'm looking forward to seeing the final version which should fix most of these bugs. I'm really impressed that they were able to fix 70 plus categories of bugs in this update. Let me know your experience in the comments below and what device you're using and of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. The wallpaper is actually blurred and this is what it looks like. And if we go into customize and then go over to home screen, you'll see I have a blur on it. So I think it looks pretty great either way, but I wanted to share that with you. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.